you know, image really is worth a thousand words, a thousand words that I can't say on YouTube, but dear Lord, get me on Odyssey. Uh, click links for Odyssey and you Get on Odyssey. It is the path forward. Uh, the, the censorship on YouTube is off the friggin' hook. Like, seriously, if you scroll through YouTube at night looking for a live stream to listen to in the background, it's a ghost town on YouTube. There's not the stuff that used to be on there. And even the people on, that are on YouTube that are still very funny, very talented people, there's just not enough of them. And the ones that are remaining, they're so tightly constrained by what they can say. And they're scared of, like, oh, well, I guess we'll have to take these videos down. It's like, oh, yeah, that's a pain in the ass. Um, where you go on Odyssey and, like, that Ralph Retort guy is putting out two videos a day. And there's a bunch of other channels. I can't even mention the names on, on YouTube who are doing live streams, you know, several times a week. Um, I really mean it. Odyssey is the place if you're looking for, like, YouTube from 10 years ago or for even slightly edgy content. I don't mean, like you know, insane, just nonstop hate crimes on, like, spotted owls or something. I mean, like, stuff you could talk about 10 years ago on YouTube, it's like, none of it's gone from YouTube. It is, it's a ghost town at night. It's freaking bizarre. Anyway, so, um, I put off this, making this video, like, I don't know, those normie channels, like, the movie blog type channel guys, um, talk about this kind of thing. They can call them woke or talk around a lot of elephants or, or self-hating whatever's. Um, this is a, there's a South Park video where Kyle's cousin comes to visit and he's tossing out softballs. And this with Miss Chokes on Dick is the teacher up front. Uh, he's tossing out softballs and Cartman is just dying. He's trying not to swing at every pitch he has to just sit there and watch these balls float gently past him until finally he cracks and he blurts out his one-liner comeback which is freaking awesome anyway so shakespeare who is a trans irish furry other kin wrote i think romeo and juliet which i'm not into because romance is sort of the g word for lighthearted and frivolous so i looked into west side story and it seemed to have been anti-white globalist propaganda right from the start and it's like came out 70 years ago or something it's something about a puerto rican gang versus an italian gang or irish or polish whatever it seems like the guy sondheim was trying to make it some kind of f whitey thing but polish irish italians were never i know it's here it seems kids today you say oh yeah they were never white you don't they don't get it when you say that um they are what they are polish irish or italians Anyway, but what's he going to do? Make it a gang of, like, English and Germans who are, like, the upper crust who whites and also fighting Puerto Ricans in the streets or rumbling. Um, many gangs were... I better skip that. Um, but if you put that in a musical, they would have uh, burned the stage down. So there's Woke, and then there is Burning $100 Bills to Power a Train Headed Off a Cliff Woke. Uh, this play cost a hundred million dollars, which I didn't, or musical, I didn't know they cost that much. That's, uh, I think I could pretty much put on a musical for probably ten thousand dollars, just you know, pay for the sets and the uh, the rental of the theater. Um, you got these uh, champagne limousine, uh, upper crust L.A., San Francisco, New York City woke people who will go pay two hundred dollars to watch some anti-white navel gazing because they're rich and they need to have something to post on Instagram. Like these people really are, like ordinary pleasures don't do it for them anymore. They have to uh, do a line of pharmaceutical enhancements and go, you know, go to a play or a musical. That's just it's just some stupid, stupid propaganda du jour but it's just a, it's a social media post look hey we're dressed up and we, we went to play about whatever's currently popular that you'll forget about in a nanosecond they will literally go watch musicals about the dancing um dancing slave boys of pakistan or afghanistan i probably shouldn't have said those country names on youtube damn it a play about uh, people who um do not uh, um break children's souls there is no line in the sand for them there's nothing they won't cross they they would watch satan juggle babies and eat them alive if it was a chance to get likes on their facebook post liberals have no core to them nothing is honored or revered part of the reason they have to destroy history destroy the accomplishments of the past and tear down the icons and statues and eventually they'll destroy the old art and music well they'll probably say they're going to destroy it but they're probably going to sell it overseas um that's all that's a matter of time like you think oh no my favorite museum in san francisco is going to be just fine all this no nope. no nope. 
And I'm not even talking about the classics, which, yeah, they're going to burn those or they're going to sell them to foreign investors. I'm talking about stuff made in the 80s is not politically correct for stuff made now. Stuff made in the 90s, stuff made 20 years ago. Stuff, it's, it's, there is no there there. When, if you don't have a core dogma, then there's no, there's no line in the sand to draw to and say, like, this is what we are and this is what we're not. So political correctness, it just ever increases until, until you get to repeating history and going to the gulags of uh, Russia and Eastern Europe which is the anniversary of the uh, Ukrainian massacre a few days ago. Um, they have to destroy the, these accomplishments of the past. They don't want future generations to see greatness. They might have done great and terrible things, judged by the flickering rules of today, but they did do great things. Activists today are obese women with a bullhorn speaking to a crowd of sheep on cell phones. It's sad to watch because they're midwits. They're, they're not people who matter because they're all like the, the activists. Is, say she's got a, I don't know, a m middle of the bell curve or maybe slightly the bell curve. And the audience is slightly the left of the bell curve. But they're not great. They're never going to accomplish great things because they don't have that spark of life in them. They don't have this burning passion to do something. It's like we're just fighting against something, but we don't know what we are because we're not anything. We can be whatever we need to be to fight against something. Well, then... You're just ephemeral, and as soon as you, whatever you fought against, you've destroyed, you're just going to fade away into warring factions and tribes, which is like why the left is, always has a problem with infighting, because they don't know what they are. Um, they're a bunch of derivatives. Like, to see, peak, peak um, first world privilege is to be a 200 to 300 pound woman talking on a bell, a, 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 a microphone, a bullhorn speaker to people on, you know, $1,200 iPhones. Like, yeah, you're really you're really fighting the power there. Um, they're trying to attack the source, but they're tearing down a civilization that they never could have created. And once they tear it down, they won't have a civilization. You'll have mud huts. They're melting down Confederate statues to make some woke icon. They see that in their head as a win. Stop and think about that. That's an L. That's a big. You're taking something. You're transforming it, but you didn't create it. That's an L. They're not great people. They don't create the source. They're parasites. They destroy the source. They tear down history and replace it with nothing. Eventually, a McDonald's creeps in. Congratulations. Peak Weimar America. You fought. You fought to tear down this statue. What do you have there? Oh, it's a taco shop now. Oh. Okay. So is that what you set out to accomplish? We didn't set out to accomplish anything. We set, down, we set out to tear things down. Oh. So what are you now? We don't know. So what was Occupy Wall Street about? We don't know, but ten years later, now we have bank. The, the bankers are um, marching in gay pride parades. They're 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 funding the floats. So, you, do you think maybe you got subverted by the bankers all along? What do you what? Uh, but it's like very few of them self reflect because to self reflect is is not allowed on the left. Um, so they uh, they swap out like uh, an English writer. He's known all of the world and transliterated into like 50 languages. Someone who mattered, someone who made a difference. But he used the N-word. <laughs> so they swap him out for a POC trans furry other kin that isn't very good and nobody has heard of and doesn't have international fame and definitely won't stand the test of time, not even in their home country. Cool, we swapped out Samuel Clemens for a POC lady. Is she any good? No, but it doesn't matter because the new students are illiterate, so it's a win-win. I imagine Spielberg Theater with strings coming from above to make the audience clap on cue. That Gulliver's Travel guy was definitely on point with the, the flappers and the lips. So uh, Spielberg and Kushner, no, I don't think it's that Kushner, set out to make a 1980s ski school uh, movie where John Cusack has to race down a mountain of cocaine and avoid that Nickelodeon guy who turned out to be sort of a foot-focused bundles of sticks degenerate. Or they have to raise money to save the teen center from the evil don't say it, property development company, but uh, that wouldn't fly with them, so they swap them out for a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Trump clone, which is what they're doing with West Side Story. It's the African playing the Puerto Ricans who will sort of be at odds with the Italians, but really, since they're both disenfranchised, marginalized, oppressed, diverse colors of people, they need to team up and fight the blonde-haired, blue-eyed out of Austrian central casting the new property development guy is going to look a whole lot like Trump, and he will even have a name quite like that. Maybe he'll change his name, too. You watch Wonder Woman 1984. Who's that guy that played the uh, the Trump character? He's, he's some Brazilian guy or Spanish guy or something, so they dyed his hair blonde because he's he had dark hair, and they had to make him the bad guy, so they uh, had to dye his hair blonde. That was in Wonder Woman 1984. You know, 
watch that movie with a piece of paper and just take like just one page of notes on who the protagonists and antagonists are. It it'll blow your it'll blow your tits off. It's like oh, it's just one movie. Okay, so go watch go watch twenty more movies with a piece of paper and take one page of notes on protagonist antagonist matrix. There's a whole lot of correlation going on there. Um, anyway, so uh, John Cusack will beat the blonde skier and his blonde girlfriend and team up with the dark-haired French girl because in Hollywood, blonde is bad and dark hair is good because Hitler was blonde and blue-eyed or something. Or maybe, I don't think he, I don't think he was now that I think about it. Anyway, so this is in English and Spanish, but with no subtitles. Because, why not? Because, fuck you, that's why. The English-speaking audience will be shit out of luck, but it doesn't matter. If you're European-American who's going to watch globalist plays and musicals, then you're a masochist who enjoys the humiliation ritual. Hey, some people are just natural bottoms, I guess. Is that is that the right term? Or submissive? I don't know. If you, All I know about that culture is what I learned from it. It's, it's always sunny in Philadelphia with squirrels and beavers and, and bears and stuff like this. And they discovered that they're having this conversation. The guy had left the room because anyway. So um, that that was funny for nine episodes, no nine seasons, and then and then they started like lecture us on trans rights. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? This is always sunny in Philadelphia. It's it's supposed to be irreverent and fight the man. It's not supposed to be. Oh no, we need to have a lecture on trans rights. R- really? Aren't do you guys have like nine years of being in blackface? Uh forget about that. Just wash that away. Um. So if you want to play, there's Shakespeare and there's like, I don't know, uh, German and Italian, um, uh, what do you call those, those musicals or fat ladies, uh, opera, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, go to the European source material. Why on earth would you pay money for globalist propaganda? Some people seem to enjoy the humiliation ritual. You know, keep that in the privacy of your own bedroom. Or maybe they don't understand it when people say this stuff is subversive. Subversion has a meaning. Really, really think about that word. Look at the message that they're putting out with this stuff. I mean, really start thinking about this stuff. San Francisco liberal, whose car, whose Tesla. Oh, yeah, my $147,000 Tesla gets broken into once a month. So I pay $475 to have a tow truck company or the the window replacement guy comes out. He cleans up the glass and he pops in a new window and he puts in the silicon sealer. And it's like a set and it's $500. So uh, you do that every three weeks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, $4,200 a year. It's just the cost of parking on the street because we need the garage for whatever storage because of San Francisco homes, $2 million. I don't have, you know, three bedroom, two bath. They're pretty friggin' small. So we need the garage and go, oh, okay, so, but, you know, like once a week, you got uh, guys with cordless drills who are uh, drilling through those garage door locks because they use coat hangers to try to pop the locks and do a home invasion. So, uh, yeah, 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 that's just, you know, part and parcel. So are you the same liberal you were five years ago? Like, are you just as liberal? Are you starting to wake up? Will you ever wake up, Mr. San Francisco liberal? And they did an interview on YouTube, and I swear to God, I could see... I could see into the I could see the thoughts above his I could read his face and read his eyes and you could see it was you could see a change happening to Mr. San Francisco Liberal who's you know, he's a dentist and he's he's doing very well or he's a doctor who's doing very well and you could see the thoughts start to come together in the back of his mind. Like he knows he's on camera and he's gotta say one thing and be cool, but you're reading his tonal inflections and his, his his facial slackness and the muscles and all the twitches and like you can see the thoughts going on. Mr. San Francisco Liberal is not the San Francisco Liberal he was ten years ago. You'd have to be on drugs to be as liberal as you were ten years ago. Um where was I going with that? Uh okay, so well, that's about as politically incorrect as I can go. Um, the funny thing is they put $100 million into a, a musical. That seems a lot of money to me. I think I could probably put a musical together for like a few tens of thousands of dollars for a few background scenes, like paint background scenes. You rent the theater, you have insurance. No, you couldn't pay the actors, but there's a lot of people who will do plays and musicals for you know a very little amount of money um, just because people like to do creative things as long as the creative endeavor is something that is valued. You know, people like to do Shakespeare. You know, It is what it is. I think I could probably do a musical for, for less than $100 million. I think I could probably do 100 million musicals for $100 million. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next episode.